Hi, it's Mika Mitchell with Lone Star College Kingwood Library Services. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an MLA citation for an article found in a research database. Let's get started. For an article, we're going to be looking for the following elements. First, we'll need an author. We'll be looking for the title of the article. We'll be looking for the title of the journal that it's published in. There will likely be some numbers. So the volume and issue number of the journal that the article is found in will have a publication date and a location. We'll also have a second container and this container will explain where we found the article, what database and where it's located. So we'll need the title of the container and the location for that one. In this example, I'm going to use an article found in Academic Search Complete called Effects of Sleep Deprivation on Cognitive and Physical Performance in University Students. You can see in the detailed record here, we have a number of authors here. The source is listed, and it says that it was published in the Journal of Sleep and Biological Rhythms in July of 2017. It's published in Volume 15, Issue 3. The page range in this uh, volume and issue for this particular article is 217 to 225, and that's nine pages long. This is just a great detail if you're looking for how many pages you're going to be reading, um, but it's not going to be useful for the actual works cited citation. Another thing that you want to look for is the DOI number. It could just be a URL sometimes, but what the DOI does is if you were to just go into any search engine and enter the DOI, that specific article will always come up. So it's kind of like the article's ISBN number. It's unique to this particular article and we will always get back to it. So let's get started. First thing is we need the authors. So when we have more than two authors, great thing about MLA is we only need to cite the first author and then say at all and all of them. So I'm just going to copy the first author's name. And the great thing here too is that it's already placed last name comma first name. So when we go into our Word document here, I'm going to paste it, keeping the text only. And this is great because it leaves it in Times New Roman size 12 font, which is how the rest of your paper should be published. So we've got Patrick, which is the, the last name. Yusuf is the first name. Because there's more, we're going to have a comma. And then we're going to put at all. Put a period afterwards to close out that first sentence, which is the author. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and pull up the title of the article. I'm just going to copy it. You can do Control C or right click and copy. I'm going to paste with keep text only again. And because it's an article, it should have quotation marks around it. Please note that the period should always go inside the quotation marks. Another thing you should pay attention to is the capitalization of words. Um, so effects, sleep, deprivation, cognitive, and physical performance, all of these should be capitalized. Oops. University students as well. All right, add another space. Now we're going to start working on the first container, which is all this information right here. So the easiest thing to do is just copy that 
pop that over to our Word document. Again, paste, text only. So there's some things we need to fix here. First is sleep and biological rhythms need to be italicized because it is housing the article. Container has a lot of run on sentences to explain, break up each element. So we're going to have a comma after the title of the container. Next thing will be the number sequence. So the volume is going to be in lowercase because it's within that sentence, but because it's an abbreviation, we do have to have a period. And we're going to, I'm going to have a comma after 15. Issue number is in MLA, just no, N-O period. After the three, we have another comma. Next comes the publication date. And because July is such a small amount of letters, we don't need to abbreviate it. I just put the Y in. But if it's, say, um, September, we will put S-E-P-T, period. Then we have the year followed by another comma. So now we're going to look at the page range. In MLA, if it's just one single page, it would be P period and the number. But because we have a range, it's going to be PP, which means page plural, and then the page number range. So let's add that extra P there with a period because it's an abbreviation, and then 217 to 225, and we close that out with a period. Now, if this was just a printed article, we would be done. But remember, we got this from a database, so it's housed somewhere online. So we're going to pull up the name of the database and where the database can be found. So we're going to go to copy academic search complete because that's the name of the collection in EBSCOhost. But if you don't have that information and depending on what your instructor requires, you could just get away with EBSCOhost. I don't encourage it because it does require a lot more searching to find it. So I'm going to right click again, keep text only. Now, it's a container. It's something that's housing something bigger. So we're going to go again and italicize it. The last thing we need is the location. And again, it could be the DOI this time or the permanent link. You should never copy the URL from the address bar. The reason for this is if I were to copy this and go to a new browser, because I don't always have the same session up, it will not take me to the article. As you can see, it's kind of like I've hit a dead end. So instead of that, there's on the right hand side, uh, there's a toolbar and on it, there's a permanent link. So if you were to select that, copy this permanent link, it will always take you back to this article. So I'm just gonna copy it here and I'm going to paste it in. So this would be one option. I'd get rid of the HTTP and I put a period at the end. But because I already found the DOI number, we're going to use that instead. When we properly format DOI, it's all going to be in lowercase with a colon and no space as I put in the DOI number. So we're going to do DOI colon and then here, hold on. DOI colon and then paste it in with a period at the end. Now, I would always say, let me copy this, 
have a hyperlink. No matter what, make sure there's a hyperlink. And I just right click, I select link, and I paste it in. It's that permanent link. And there we go. But guess what? I did something really silly. I just pasted it in, and that changed the format of the text. So I need to go back in and just make sure it's set to Times New Roman and there's no extra spaces. No extra spaces, there we go. And there you have it. That is what a journal article in a database would look like in an MLA citation. If you have any questions, if you're confused, if you just need some guidance on what elements go where, where the punctuation is, we're here to help. Email us, chat with us. Thanks for watching.